to the cloud. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the group K. Um, this is our English version of the course and I'd like to welcome you all. And a special shout out to all these attendees here today and uh, particularly my cohort, my um, uh, partner in crime, as they say, uh, Alfredo, and uh, our, one of our chief advisors, uh, Bill Ajur. So welcome all. Uh, I'd like to just go over a few things. Because this session is being recorded, um, I'd like to mention that uh, um, a few housekeeping rules. Uh, uh, we'd like you to mute your mic because if you're on, uh, it, it'll disturb the recording, but there will be a point where we'll open up the mics at, at the end of the session. Uh, also close your video for because of the uh, bandwidth issues and we'll be monitoring the chat um, all the way through. So if you have questions, we'll make sure we'll grab them as well. So let's just go through some of the purposes of what we're doing. Uh, this is a weekly call um, that that's, provides an opportunity to to dig deeper into the subject matter. And um, so we uh, like to um, ask you all to uh, uh, go and look at the recordings as well. And um, so um, we used to use a product called uh, Bluehost, which was bundled with Moodle, but we've moved to Zoom. So it's, it's working out uh, quite well. Uh, we did have one issue, right, Alberto, with our Spanish group uh, in Cuba. Uh, recently, and we had to use streaming to to YouTube, but it worked out quite well. Um, all the uh, recordings will be um, uh, placed into our playlist uh, with, the, and I'll, I'll share this link into the chat. And that's the playlist of all the videos from this session. But we also have recordings, about 130 or 40 recordings in, in different playlists as well from previous groups. Okay, so the session is going to go roughly 45 minutes or so. And we'll leave about 15 minutes for questions. Okay, over to you, Alfredo. Sure. So uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. Uh, and welcome, Bill, to uh, this uh, session. As always, you're one of the advisors that always comes to the sessions and, and contribute with some comments and ideas. So having said that, uh, you already met Glenn. Uh, I'm Alfredo. Uh, I'm um, in Puerto Rico, in the Caribbean, and Glenn, as you all know, is in Canada. And this session is basically going to give you an overview of the process we're going to be following in the course with, with some details on some updating that each one of you have to do once you log in for the first or second time into the course. Next slide, Glenn. Um, so, maybe, yeah, go ahead. So. Maybe it's important that you all know that we have uh, sponsors because we offer this course completely free for each and every one of you. So it's sort of a fellowship uh, model we're following, but it's thanks to all the sponsors that we're able to do this. Uh, Glenn, if you want to add something. Yeah, um, you, the the levels of sponsorship, uh, the 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 biggest sponsors have been Ripe, and that's the um, RAR from from Europe and Middle East, uh, PIR Public Interest Registry. Uh, those uh, actually PIR was one of our first uh, sponsors, which is uh, gave us inspiration when we started this at the height of COVID. Uh, .PR is the country domain name from Puerto Rico. Uh, Verisign. Uh, they're the ones that are famous for .com. Aaron is one of the RERs for North America. Latinx is uh, Latin American um, RER. Identity Digital, uh, CIRA, Afrinec, ICANN, and GoDaddy it rounds up the field. And we appreciate uh, uh, their support. And uh, you know, if you run into them at an uh, ICANN meeting or elsewhere, thank them for their participation. So I'd like to just go over the agenda today. <clears throat> um, I, I alluded a little bit, but I think we'll talk about why did we create VSIG in the first place? Uh, who's involved? Um, what are the features and benefits? And uh, what are, are the immediate outcomes for the current student cohort, housekeeping and live 
walk through. Uh, that's a lot to cover, but we'll try to best we can to cover through it. So let me start off. Why did we create VSIG? It was actually um, uh, a, a conversation Alfredo and I had at the height of COVID back in the spring of 2020. We have been involved along with um, Eduardo Diaz, who's actually one of our advisors as well. Um, we were not able to do the North American School of Internet Governance, which is a face-to-face, -face, the only uh, School of Internet Governance in uh, North America. So we uh, basically started it off with our first course in the summer. Uh, actually, we spent the summer working on creating the tool. Um, so that's uh, that was the essence of it. And we're into our 11th version of English. We had two versions of French. We've had, um, what? sorry, Alfredo, six or seven in the Spanish? Uh, seven. So seven of the Spanish. And uh, so that takes us to who is involved. Well, we have a, a tier system. We have uh, 10 speakers of every one of our sessions. So we, we look for the leaders in the uh, uh, internet governance space. Uh, it's not just restricted to to people who who are in business, people who are dealing with human rights issues. A lot of the issues that may be ignored uh, are also encouraged. We try to have a good balance between North and South uh, speakers, as well as male and female. So um, I think we've created a good rep repository of recordings as a result of that. But we, in addition to the uh, recordings, we also have our advisory council, which has been uh, quite seminal in giving us advice uh, on, on, and, and uh, Bill is a, an excellent editor. He'll notice things that um, in our haste that we, our diction isn't right or tense, or we've done something that he's quite, uh, quite analytical. So he's also, We've, uh, and he attends all these calls, which has been quite, quite good. So as I said, who's involved? Sponsors, students, and we have over um, approximately 100, uh, 1,200 students have taken our program. And it turns out that most of our, our students have been from Latin America, Africa, and in the Far East. Uh, not as many Europeans and not that many North Americans. But again, this is a virtual school of internet governance. And it's open to anyone. It's free to anyone. Uh, and we've developed the multilingual approach as well. Uh, what are the features and benefits? Um, as you've had a chance to get into the course, you'll see how rich the content is um, in, in the all the material is available for you to download. Um, so you can, uh, if you see a video, capture it. If you see a publication, uh, we try to convert anything that's a slideshow or a document into a uh, ebook. Every one of those ebooks can be downloaded. So you should start working now to, and you come across something and, and all of you have a particular interest. If your particular interest is maybe security, that's an area you can heavily uh, concentrate on. Other sections, you may have a cursory interest and you may not want to collect some of those, those materials, but um, you know there's clear benefits for you to access the material. We're not, um, we're not like a lot of uh, organizations that get crazy over copyright issues. We've, uh, this is share-like approach, uh, Creative Commons, and we're constantly um, updating the material, checking if there's errors. If there's anything that you folks have come across that's a great paper, a great speaker, anything that you think the course could benefit for future students, We'd love to hear from you. Um, number four, what are immediate outcomes for the current student cohort? Do you want to touch on that, uh, Alfredo? Sure. If you go on to uh, the next slide, I think we have something regarding okay. that. But okay. basically, uh, the the outcomes of, for, for all of you will be uh, in terms of the knowledge you're gaining. It'll give you an idea of all the uh, organizations out there that deal with internet governance 
And besides that, you'll be able to get a certificate if you do all the requirements that we're going to explain in a, in a little while so that you will be able to use that uh, as a platform to move further into the IG uh, environment and, and request some other fellowship. And we'll talk about some examples uh, during the presentation of this. Uh, so uh, Glenn mentioned a few, a couple of things about uh, why VSIC. Uh, VSIC is basically a, a response to COVID-19. Uh, as Glenn mentioned, in spring 2020, we had this concern that we weren't going to have a face-to-face -face encounter yeah, in internet governance, in, in our internet governance school. Uh, and then we decided to uh, submit a proposal to PIR, which were gracious uh, enough to give us the uh, starting funds for this and to keep it free, as we have mentioned already for each and every one of you. Now, it's important that you understand that VSIC does not replace face-to-face -face encounters. And that's why we want you to uh, look into the different regional schools of internet governance and participate on those if they are face-to-face, -face. because it's important that you do some networking, you meet other colleagues, you meet people that have similar interests as, as you do, and even different interests, because you might discover there's, you're missing something that they can bring to the table. Uh, to enhance your uh, knowledge on, on the topics. Uh, Glenn, something you want to add there? Yeah, um, somebody mentioned to me the other day, uh, it, it was actually a senior executive of, of uh, sponsor. And when we walked through the course, uh, her first reaction was, wow, I wish this was around when I got into the field. And uh, this is exactly what we didn't have when Alfredo and I started this. Well, I think I started a little earlier than you with ICANN in 2009, but you know, we, we both came at this problem from a different expertise, uh, but you know, there wasn't anything uh, that was available. And now there's some choices, um, you know, some things that are shorter courses, various different players are, are, are offering it. But I think this product that we have here, particularly the opportunity of the weekly calls, but also the discussion threads. And this is why we kept repeating ourselves, introduce yourself, uh, get to know who the participants are, because the idea is other people could be doing something similar to what you're doing in another country. Uh, and again, uh, this, is, this is an opportunity to find out what other people are doing. Uh, and, you know, we have quite a range of, of people. Some people want to take a course, they want a piece of paper. And I can't, we can't stop that. These are adults. Uh, if you want to be actively involved in participating with it, um, great. But, you know, we don't have a stick. We don't. We, we people, some people have come back with feedback saying that the exam, the um, questions and the quizzes should be tougher. Uh, and again, they're memory aids. So it, it's again, uh, you may not agree with our approach in some things, but there's an explanation. Um, Alfredo, did you want to add to that? No, let's go on to the next slide. Okay. Uh, okay. Go ahead. So you've met Alfredo and me. Uh, we have language specialists. Uh, we're, we're, we're working with different people on, on different, different languages. One is Russian and the other is Bengali. Um, we, we've had a lot of talk with uh, UNESCO in, in different languages, uh, but also with, with various different univ Beijing University for simplified Chinese. Um, again, down the road, um, but we're, our core product right now as it turns out in terms of interest is Spanish and English. Uh, we have an advisory council of members, I'm Rita um, from, from, she's the chair of, of AP Rello uh, from New Delhi. Uh, we have Bill Joris, as you, you see, he's online from um, near uh, San Francisco. Uh, we have Eduardo Diaz, who's the chair of the North American School of Internet Governance, and he's an ALAC member. Uh, one of the signatories on the, the agreement with ICANN way back when uh, for uh, Norello. Uh, we have a, Dr. Olivier Crepin-Leblanc, who's uh, based in Geneva, 
uh, long stay. He was a former ALAC member. Um, anyone else I'm missing? Uh, Satish, I think. Uh, no, I don't think Satish is. Uh, oh, that's right. He's not. I, I think it's Pablo. Pablo yeah, you're right. Dr. Pablo Rodriguez from from Puerto Rico as, as well. So that that uh, covers the, the advisory council. Uh, program evaluators uh, is another category independent from advisory council. And Satish is one of those. <laughs> so we just jumped the gun. OK, uh, guest speakers, about 120 uh, approximately for the live sessions. And, and then uh, most important is our participants which I mentioned around roughly 1,200 to 1,300. And uh, uh, something that I would like to add, Glenn, is that uh, we're talking about the English version of the course. If we add the participants from the Spanish uh, course, uh, we have about seven to 800 additional participants, and we have additional playlists in Spanish for the guest speakers we have on the weekly uh, live sessions in Spanish as well. So we have... If we add all that, we have close to 2,500 participants uh, in, in the virtual school and over 100 and uh, close to 200 uh, videos that you can all access free of charge there in YouTube. Uh, and you can watch them and use the uh, translation tool available if you want to hear something that's in Spanish. Um this is this next slide here is actually uh, Alfredo's expertise uh, as a course designer. Um, he uh, looked at a lot of different products at the time, and, and there was a, a number of them on the market. But he decided that Moodle was the best choice of price, uh, flexibility, uh, what it could do um, and for us in terms of managing uh, everyone from students, teacher, administration. Uh, it allowed us the media rich uh, online content. Uh, it was mobile friendly. As some of you may use the mobile for access to this course. In fact, maybe given time, we'll do a demo of, of the, how the mobile works. Uh, it's also, as I said earlier, there's offline learning opportunity. And, um, and that's incredibly important for you to take advantage of. The live sessions, the discussion forums I mentioned, and then each module, 11 modules have quizzes. And at the end, if you complete all the requirements, which we sent you the uh, participation um, handbook is the certificate of completion. Uh, there, there you have a copy of the certificate of completion. And that's what you're going to get once you complete all the requirements we have for the course and we'll be mentioning them, but it's basically taking all the quizzes, getting at least 80% um, each and every one of the quizzes, looking at the participant guidebook and checking it as being read and completing a survey we have at the end in the last module uh, so that you can give us some feedback in terms of the structure, the content and so forth. Now, uh, Glenn mentioned the the uh, Moodle app. There's a, a Moodle app you can download to your mobile device. Uh, there's one for uh, iOS uh, devices and another one for Android devices. And all you need to do is download it. And once you download it, you click on it, it'll ask you for the URL of the platform you want to uh, gain access to. There's the address. Then it'll ask you for your username and your password, which are your username and uh, individual passwords. So make sure that you, if you want to download the application to do that. The, the, the idea of downloading the Moodle app is that you'll be able to download the content of a particular module, work, with, work on it offline. You don't have to be uh, connected to the uh, internet to do that. And you can then go back to a place where you have Wi-Fi or internet access and upload any of the things that you did offline when you synchronize it with the platform. And we will be able to see uh, the progress in the course itself. Next slide. 
Um, before I go to the next slide, I just noticed because I've been focusing on changing the slides, I just checked the participant list and I apologize. Three people were in the waiting room, which I didn't realize. So I'm sorry. I don't know how long you folks were waiting, but this entire recording will be available from what you've lost. Also, we'll send you guys, everybody, a copy of the slideshow. Okay, so I apologize on that. Okay. So, so this screen gives you a, a sort of a feeling of, of the things you'll be seeing if you download uh, the uh, Moodle app or if you go into the platform and some of you have already done so. You, each module has an introduction. Uh, the, the center uh, image gives you an idea of how we introduce the topic and the one on the right gives you sort of an outline of the different elements that each module has and we'll see that in detail later on. Next slide. Um, myself and, and, and Alfredo may use acronyms which are common with ICANN or IGF or ISOC or other groups. There is uh, throughout the, the course, we encourage you to use uh, a glossary of terms. ICANN has a acronyms and terms, uh, others. So uh, have that handy uh, so that either somebody's talking or when you're going through the literature, because a lot of times people will use just the short forms, just as a cautionary. Yeah, and we actually mentioned that in the introduction and throughout the course in each one of the modules, we mentioned that there's three key uh, glossaries of terms and, and dictionaries you can use. There's one from ICANN, there's another one from uh, GSMA, and there's a third one that was done by Diplo uh, Foundation that they haven't updated yet, but they should soon because it's a little bit out outdated, but it has the basic concepts there. Next slide. Uh, this uh, image gives you an idea of what you will see when you use your mobile device in terms of how, how to navigate the course. For each module, uh, we have a short introduction. We use some audio files as well to give you some additional information that you can read. And on the left, you can see the basic navigating tools that are available. Next. This gives you an idea of the, the type of content you'll see in each module. There's a, we use a, uh, uh, a book format. So you'll see that the content basically is organized as a book. And as you know, books have uh, chapters and they have sections. So that's what you see on the slide on the left. And on the right, it gives you some more details on that. Next. Uh, we mentioned quizzes. So we have quizzes for each one of the modules and you're seeing one from the French course, uh, which is a true or false question. But we have uh, multiple choice, we have uh, uh, pairing, uh, we have click and drag, we have different formats for questions that you'll be able to, to answer. As Glenn mentioned, it's important you understand that these are basic questions. They're not questions to make you think. They're not questions to, you know, to catch you on, on, on some particular uh, wording. It's just so that you understand the basic concepts of each one of the uh, modules we're going to be covering. Uh, you'll notice that on the left, there's the uh, sequence of questions you're answering. And at the end, you'll, you'll see if you did as expected to getting the 80%, which is the minimum needed uh, to pass the, the quiz. How many times can I take the quiz, some might ask? as many times as you need in order to get the 80% uh, percent on each quiz. Um, okay, so let me jump in on the student benefits. Um, I think we provide you um, or encourage you to engage in a clear educational roadmap for internet governance. So because the way the book is set up, we're showing you all the various different opportunities in um, educational institutions and uh, players in the game uh, so that it, you know, after you get your education uh, or you enhance your education, you may not be aware of the opportunities, whether in uh, 
fellowships or job opportunities or internships. So I think we try to open up to your eyes to how big the IG space is and who are the players. So again, um, the whole purpose of this is not for learning for the sake of learning, which is nice if you have nothing to do, but many of you have, are, have, are on a career path. And, and so we, we're trying to make it as succinct as possible for you to understand the opportunities. Uh, the learning environment is to share knowledge and experience. And uh, if you guys run across something uh, that you've come across, a great article, great podcast, great video, share it. We are sharing our knowledge and the idea is we're, we've flooded you with a lot of material uh, with, with expectation that, that it's appreciated and also expectation if you see something and someone else can benefit from it, share it. And that's why each of the modules have a discussion thread. Uh, next is participate in an interactive online environment with discussions, chats, live sessions, and various perspectives. I think it's self-evident. Yes, it is. So in terms of what are your responsibilities uh, for this uh, course to, to get the certificate, uh, you have to complete all, all the modules, of course. Uh, as Glenn mentioned, uh, you can drill down into the material using the complementary resources that we have which is another section within, within, within each module. And you can, you know, uh, look at that additional material if you're really interested in that topic. Like, for example, if you're a lawyer and you want to look into uh, intellectual property and, and how does internet governance uh, is used to complement that, you can look at that. Uh, the quizzes, as I mentioned, we have 10 quizzes, each one, uh, you need to get 80%. You'll see them clearly. They're identified as quizzes. And you can, you have to complete the full evaluation survey, which is at the end of the 10th, uh, the last module, the Emerging Technology Modules. And here's also the link if you want to look at it to get an idea. So now there's some housekeeping that I have to uh, mention to all of you. For those of you that haven't, access the course and those that have already done so you'll see that the at the right top side uh you'll see there's a tick there if you click on it it'll take you to a sub menu where you have your profile and you're going to have to edit your profile if the information isn't correct next slide now the things you can we're looking for you to update is your city, your country, and your time zone. And that is so that when you look at some announcement or some event reference, it'll reflect your time zone and not the time zone of the platform, which is uh, located in the United States, probably. Next slide. Uh, you can add your picture if you want to. So we can identify you, even though you're not actively participating in the course with uh, the in the live sessions and using your video so you can upload that uh, we don't charge you for that it's really up to you if you want to do it or not next slide the other thing that I mentioned was that uh, the part there's a participant guidebook that uh, Glenn sends you when you are uh, registered in the course but we are also asking you to look at that uh, guidebook in the course and click on me, uh, mark as done, so that that click will uh, change to done, which is one of the requirements in order to complete the course and get the certificate of, of completion. Next. The other housekeeping item is that we need you to introduce yourself. We need to know who we are uh, talking to. What's your background? What are your expectations? what you expect to get out of the course, and what are your ne next steps after you finish this uh, uh, learning uh, experience with your colleagues. And the other thing is that we would like to do some networking, have people from different parts of your country, if you're from Ghana, 
or if you're from different countries in Africa or around the world, and you want to get together to talk about some initiative or project you would like to do. Like, for example, uh, we're going to have a, a next uh, global IGF in, in December. And some of you uh, are going to be there. Others will like to uh, participate in different panels that have been set, been set up. And maybe you would like to contribute to the discussion on those topics in the IGF uh, in December. Next. So we mentioned that we have live sessions every week. Uh, we're going to have some live sessions and we'll talk about these uh, sessions uh, a little later on. We use Zoom as the tool to transmit uh, these sessions live, uh, which we later record and upload to the playlist, the corresponding playlist in YouTube. Next. For, for most of the uh, live sessions, you need to register uh, or you just click on the link you'll see in each one of the modules where, where that uh, session is scheduled and it'll take you directly to the room where you have to uh, log in as you just did for this uh, session. Next. Uh, as I mentioned, we also have some files, uh, audio files that I've been uh, creating so that this will give some of you that are probably driving hear something uh, about what the module covers or some discussions that we're having in that module. In this case, we're talking about uh, the requirements to complete uh, the course and get the certificate of completion. Next slide. Okay, so in summary, you have to update your uh, profile. Uh, you have to uh, read the participant guidebook and click is as done. Uh, you have to do all the quizzes and on the right you see the image of all the quizzes you are responsible to take and obtain the 80% minimum on each one of them. And there's a required completion questionnaire at the end of the last module that you have to take. That completion questionnaire won't appear until you meet all the previous requirements. Click on the participant guidebook, complete all the quizzes with 80% each. Once you've done all that, then the uh, survey will appear. And after you do the survey and complete it, then we expect you also to participate in the discussion threads we're having in each one of the modules. Uh, and of course, uh, we are going to have a short survey for each one of the modules where we have a, a live uh, session with an invited guest. And probably Glenn will talk about that in a while. Next. I, I, I want to mention uh, it's important uh, to make sure your spelling of your name is correct because that's what's going to be put on your certificate. So uh, uh, please take the time to make sure it's, it's accurate. Uh, the other thing that, that it's worth mentioning, uh, I know a lot of people don't take uh, a final survey serious. They go, great, 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 great. Actually, uh, it was suggested uh, way back when, um, fairly early in our program, that uh, what was missing was a course about AI, blockchain, um, the uh, Internet of Things. So we actually, as a result of feedback from very good feedback, people suggested an emerging technology module. So that's why you see this as an extra module. It was not part of our very beginning course. Thank you for that. And uh, another suggestion that has come up is to talk about quantum uh, uh, computing, and we're actually working on that, but we need experts on the topic. Uh, Glenn and I, that's not one of our fourth days. So if you're uh, knowledgeable of quantum computing and you want to share some resources with us, please do through the discussion threads of the corresponding modules. Thank you for that. Okay, so um, looks like we go into the uh, live session now. Uh, well, uh, t yeah, talk about the different sessions and we'll see okay. what happens. Yeah, let me, let me run through this quickly and then uh, given time. There is some questions. Uh, can you check the uh, chat, uh, um, 
if there's any questions from anyone in rural, as soon as I finish this, uh, we can uh, deal with those. Okay, so um, Dr. Olivier Crevin LeBlanc will be on uh, on the dock next week. Uh, he does an excellent uh, presentation. He's updating his slideshow. He's done this before. Uh, so it'll be 10 o'clock, same thing as this. Uh, please attend uh, if you can. Uh, it'll be recorded. Uh, but he does an excellent overview on the history of uh, internet governance. It's uh, He's an entertaining speaker. He, he's, he's, he's gracious enough to to be with us next week. Uh, next after that, uh, this will not be held next Monday. Unfortunately, John Curran can't make it on the Monday. He's on holidays. So I'll be placing the recording of this session. I'll be doing it the next day at two o'clock. If people are interested in uh, joining me when um, um, I have the call with them, but it's not necessary because I'll do the recording and I'll share it back onto the website. So there will not be a call at 10 o'clock next, um, next Monday because the following day, John will be back and I'll do the recording. This stuff happens with really busy people. He's the CEO of Aaron and he's quite keen on doing this presentation. I would like to mention that both Glenn and myself, we've been uh, Aaron Fellows a couple of times. And if you're from the uh, region, from North America, uh, look into uh, chatting with him about the opportunities of the uh, Aaron Fellowship Program, as well as going to the website that he, I'm sure he will mention, and we will have it as a resource for you. Yeah, I believe Rukia has been um, as well. I'm not sure if Bill has has been there, but uh, yeah, um, um, it's it's not a very long session. They have it three times a year in North America and the Caribbean, and uh, they do have a, a fellowship program. But uh, I can assure you, if you do apply for it, take it serious. Uh, you know uh, the. Um, uh, they, they definitely, the, the fellowship selection committees take their job very serious. So if you say, oh, I just want a fellowship, I'll just, you know, off the top of my head, do your research and make, and, and I strongly suggest uh, attending uh, Aaron meetings virtual. They're open to anyone. Get to know what it is. Uh, and again, don't, don't be taking it just because it's a free fellowship. That's not the purpose. So, uh, um, <clears throat> that does happen. So a little bit of advice. Uh, next session is Ram Mohan. Uh, he's one of the founders of uh, Affilius. Affilius got bought out uh, by Identity uh, Digital. Uh, he, I think he has the same senior position. Uh, Ram is based in Philadelphia. Uh, he's actually involved with the ISOC Philadelphia chapter. Very articulate. Used to be... Um, I believe on the ICANN board uh, as well. So he's going to be talking about infrastructure. So that will be at 10 o'clock, October 7th. And so he's fine with that time. Next is um, Emily T Taylor from DNS. Uh, she's from Oxford. Uh, so she's coming in on development at 10 in the morning. Uh, so that should be fine for her time zone uh, situation. She, she hasn't made any other changes. Um, Next, um, again, this is going to be a recording uh, because uh, Dr. Steve Crocker is tied up. He can't make the 10 o'clock. So I'll be providing the recording um, in the module on security. Um, if things change and he says, okay, I can make it at 10 in the morning, we're, we're good to go. But um, I've made uh, alterations for Steve uh, due to his um due to his schedule. Um, maybe um, this name is familiar. Uh, he's one of the founders of the internet. Him, Vince Cerf, and Bob Kahn, all three of them have been speakers for VSIG. Uh, he's um, part of, uh, he used to be the, the chair for ICANN as well. Very articulate and very knowledgeable. Next, I did have a speaker here, but as uh, we just found out that the person's getting married. So uh, uh, congratulations to her forthcoming wedding, but she can't make this call. So I've reached out to a, a few legal firms 
uh, and, and we're particularly interested in having someone talking about if you have a, a domain name and you're disputing the domain name, what's the legal repercussions? How how is how does the powers that be deal with those legal issues in terms of for you to preserve the rights of your domain name? So I have a couple of firms that we're working on. So that should still be the Monday, October 28th, but the, the speaker will be determined. I have, uh, I'm waiting for your confirmation. Next, um, Daniel Melo, he's with Ericsson. He actually is um, one of the ones that were deeply involved with uh, a green uh, carbon-free internet with the IETF. Uh, he's part of a working group. Him and I are presented uh, actually to the current ICANN strategic plan on their environmental strategy. So uh, Daniel, and we've asked uh, Professor Stefan um, uh, Carbon from uh, uh, Sherbrooke uh, University as well to join us, but that'll be a um, and you notice the time zone difference for, for me, probably not for you guys, but it'll be nine in the morning because the clocks change. Next is, is there will not be any session. It would have been a human rights session uh, at that time, but the ICANN meeting is happening. Uh, I've slotted into the module two, two recordings on human rights issues for you to, to watch. Next is Judith. Uh, Again, um, Judith has some time issues that uh, I have her at nine, but I think she was on holidays. So this may not happen at, at this time slot. It may be the recording in it. it uh, Judith will be back to me, but she's gonna talk about under the social and cultural is uh, um, it's a, a working group, a SIG it's called with uh, ISOC on the um, organization that's focused on people with disabilities and internet access. 15% <clears throat> of our population uh, have recorded disabilities. There's people who are older that are not connected. There's issues for them, especially with their disabilities. So she'll be doing a, a detailed discussion and we may have Jolly McPhee joining her as well. Uh, Glenn, if I may, this, yep. this session with uh, Judith is very important for those that are seeking uh, some kind of uh, funding for, for projects in their in communities that deal with uh, connecting the next group of people to the internet, especially those that are, have some sort of disability. And we're talking about visually impaired, uh, hearing impaired, uh, people that don't have adequate access to the internet, what tools are available, and maybe if if you are really interested, you can interested in this topic. We can you can contact her, and she can help you out with uh, some projects that she's done, and you can ask her around the world. Thank you. Yeah, and I think you make a point there. If 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 we bring someone in that that have a, have an expertise, uh, almost everyone says, please share our our information so you know you can always drop our name uh when you email these people um uh, and again consider what their time is uh be courteous but the idea is is finding these people who have the right expertise that could help you uh again um judith is quite uh quite resourceful uh next is the dr mark lister he's going to be um doing the session on emerging technology it should still be at and not anymore. And that wraps up all those sessions. So uh, are we okay for time to do a walkthrough with you? Sure. Let, let me answer a couple of questions that oh, we good. have in good. the chat. Uh, and I'll start from the end. Uh, I see that there's a question regarding the live sessions, if, if it's mandatory to, to attend the live sessions. Not really. Uh, you can watch the recording, which we uh, announce as soon as we have it available. Uh, in the uh, YouTube channel, and we also added it within the module in the uh, corresponding live session uh, module. We also would like to have anyone that can't actively participate in the live session comment in the discussion thread about the session. Maybe a question, maybe a concern, maybe their own uh, perspective or ideas about 
the topic that is being covered in that module or during the live session. Uh, thanks to those that have uh, complemented the uh, the session, the orientation session. It's they say that it's clear, uh, covers all the aspects or some of the questions they may have. So let's see if I can actually go into the live. Uh, session. Let's see, where's the course? Uh, okay, let me get the course. Hope you can see my screen. Yep, we can see it. Okay, so each and every one of you has a username and a password. I'm using mine. I'm logging in. By the way, if you forget your password, uh, let me see if I can go back. If you forget your password, there's a lost password uh, link here. So you can click on it and the system will ask you for your username or your email. So as long as your username and or your email are correct, the system will ask you to reset your password. So you don't have to contact us for that. The system will take care of that for you. So let's see, moving forward. Uh, in my case, you see that I have a lot of tabs here is because I'm working with uh, different versions of the course. But in your case, it's uh, Internet Governance Group K. And when we click on it, this is what you'll see. You'll actually have on the left, if it's not expanded, you can expand it using this symbol right here. And you'll see all the modules we have with all the content. On the right, uh, I see that Udwa Gombog is also on the course right now. That's something that you can add. You can see who else is on the course and you can sort of have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversation. Uh, so in the middle, you can see the, the content, the actual content of the course. And we're in the introduction uh, module right now. And if you look in, into the navigation on the left, you'll see that it has announcements, the participant guidebook, getting to know the participants and the information for the, for the live session. And here in the middle, you can navigate through all that. On um, the second module, which is the one that I want to actually focus on, you can see that we're talking about the history of internet governance. And on the left, you can see the structure. It has objectives. It has the history of internet governance. And what's the history of internet governance? Basically, the history of internet governance is where the actual content is. And you'll see on the right side, I mentioned to you a few slides back, that it has the format of a book. And a book has chapters and has sections. So you'll see that the one, the two, and the three re, uh, refer to the chapters. And in the case of number four, you'll see that that's the chapter. But the chapter has uh, four different sections. So we're talking about the World Summit on the Information Society, and then it gives you some more details on the, the topic, like for example, a short explanation and some references you can use there, uh, how the working group on internet uh, governance was created. Then you have uh, what happened in 2005 with the actual video of the presentation done on that topic and the WISIS forum in section 4.4, where we are going to be updating this to talk about the most recent topics uh, that are going on in the internet governance uh, world as we know. Uh, the other thing is that we have joined the discussion. So join the discussion is basically where we want you to start talking about the different topics that we have. And I see that some people have already started uh, doing that. Uh, and as uh, Glenn and I mentioned uh, in the discussion uh, threads, we always mention the different uh, glossaries or dictionaries that are available and you can just click on them and it'll take you directly to each one of them. And you can review the acronyms or the terms in detail. We have the quiz, and as you can see, the quizzes were opened on September the 4th, 
and they will all close on November the 30th at midnight uh, at UTC, which is 23, uh, uh, 2359. So please be aware of that. Uh, all the quizzes will close on that date. So anything that you haven't done by that date towards the certificate, you won't be able to uh, complete after that because we need to take care of uh, upgrading uh, the course for the next, next group. Uh, once you do the quiz, and let me see if I can do a preview here to show you. Uh, this is the way you'll see uh, each quiz. You'll see the type of question uh, uh, in the middle. And on the right, you'll see the number of questions that you have to answer. And you can uh, navigate through them, clicking on the number on the, on the right side. And that'll take you to that specific question. And at the end, you'll see all the uh, questions that you have answered and the uh, uh, score you got on that question. Now, there's an important section that we have. We have some complementary resources. Now, why do we have this section? It's important because we don't want to overwhelm you with information in the book where we have the main content. In the book, we basically give you an overview and we try to cover some basic concepts. But if you want to look into more details, uh, you can go to the complementary resources where we are constantly updating the information and you will see that at the end of the description of each resource, we give you the date it was retrieved and a link if you want to go directly to the resource. And we also have the document or the presentation in an ebook format. And you can see that in this case, these are all the navigation tools you need. You can share it, you can download it, you can uh, have it on full screen uh, or do whatever you need to do to, with that resource. And you can see that we have videos as well as ebooks and, and we try to get the original uh, videos, not some, you know, uh, simulation, uh, but we actually have the the actual uh, live video when that was uh, presented. And we have sort of a chat space, and I mentioned the chat space because that has to deal with when you want to talk with somebody individually that's in the in the course at that time, at the same time as you are. And finally, uh, we have the session, the section where we have the virtual live sessions that we will be uh, setting up. And we have the link to where you have to uh, log into the Zoom uh, site with the information to subscribe. At the end, and I'm going to the last module where we have the emerging technologies, uh, which also have the objectives, the the ebook, uh, the book format, and we have the different sections. And you will see that the quantum computing is not highlighted because we're still working on that one, but we have seven sections. We have the introduction, we have AI, we have blockchain, internet of things. We talk a little bit about 5G and the future of that. And some of you may know that we're already up to 6G. Uh, uh, we are talking about nanotechnology, the metaverse, and uh, quantum computing, as soon as it's available, we'll have it there for you. Now, I mentioned to you that after you complete all the quizzes, there's a required uh, questionnaire that you have to complete. Here's the questionnaire. It has, uh, I think, about six or seven sessions. We, we want to cover everything to ensure that we get the adequate feedback from you. If you have any recommendations, resources or you can also mention that there and then at the end you'll get the certificate as you can see right now nobody has the certificate we because we have just started the course but as soon as you complete all the requirements you'll see the certificate will appear in my case here and in your case you'll be able to see it you'll get an email with the certificate and you can also download it from this uh, section before November the 30th, which is the last date that you'll have access to the course. 
So having said that, if there's any questions, uh, Glenn, back to you. Yeah, okay, great. So um, I know normally Bill has has a question as well, but please uh, go ahead, uh, open up your mics. And uh, I appreciate the, the uh, courtesy of not having your mics open during the session. I think we have a pretty clear uh, um, recording. I'm just looking at the chat uh, and I think you addressed these issues already from the chat. I'm just waiting for anyone else who have any any other questions. So going once, no no one else, going twice, That that's it. Okay, nothing from anyone. Okay, well, I, I think uh, we tried our best. We tried to give you a really good overview of why we did in the first place. Why did we go to the bother of doing this? Um, and, uh, and I want to emphasize again, this does not replace a face-to-face -face, um, local uh, event, whether it's IGF or uh, ISOC event or, or the, your, North, your own school of internet governance locally in your country, this is a good supplementary uh, set of materials. And it's, and it's crucial uh, for anyone who's absolutely new to this. So uh, I, I appreciate the time that you all came today. Uh, we look forward to interacting with you uh, with this group and uh, we appreciate it. Over to you. Any final words, Alfredo? Sure. I just want to uh, encourage any of you that might be going to any uh, event where we, uh, you might see us like for uh, the, the ICANN event in, in Istanbul in, in November, the IGF in December, or any regional event where you might see us approach us. Uh, we won't bite you. We just want to get to know you. And since you're seeing our faces, uh, we're here to help you uh, or there to help you as well uh, to meet people that you might be interested in, in meeting and you might feel a little bit uh, shy. Again, uh, thank you all for participating uh, and we'll see you next week. Thanks again. This ends the recording. And as Alfredo says, we'll see you next Monday. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.